Hello there. Now I know this episode is titled Out of Gas, but if there's one thing that I'm not out of at the moment, it is gas because we are cooking up in this bitch, baby, because we are up to episode 8 of Firefly, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow brown coats, and yes, Arsenal won yesterday, we are still on top, ladies and gentlemen, and yeah, a little bit of brown coat in this, or golden, as we say, in the away kit, so yeah, the, the positive vibes are all here, and I have seen, I have seen in the comments in the last seven uh, Firefly videos. I cannot wait for you to get up to out of gas. I've seen those comments here and there. So yeah, we are here to react to it. It is your boy, Ellie Moses, your 22 year old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia. Shoot your shot, baby. Let's waste no more time. You are here for my reaction and that's what I'm going to give you guys. So yeah, let's get right into the reaction for episode eight of Firefly titled Out of Gas. Let's go. Oh. Straight off the bat, I get that reference right there. I feel like this is an homage to Alien, the first Alien film where it begun with establishing shots of the ship as the crew were asleep in cryosleep. Because that's the vibes I'm getting at the moment. Rest your life. Oh. On purpose? What? Come on, seriously, Zoe, what do you think? Rob, what? What do you mean? Not you. <laughs> okay. She won't be winning any beauty contests anytime soon, but she is solid. She wins it to the day you die. You are very much lacking in imagination. Everybody can forget. No matter how long the army alliance might get, we'll just get ourselves a little further. Yeah. So not running now. Not so much. <laughs> but you will. Oh, she'll be running. Just a bit of training. Got a name all picked out. <laughs> you know what? Some very, very clever transitions I've seen. Are they out of oxygen or something? Okay, that was a fantastic opening. Sort of like the establishing shots of the Serenity and then... You know, Mal looking sort of into the light as he's fading away. Like, assume he's dying and then the light shines upon him like he's entering heaven. But it's just a flashback sequence there. Um, with Zoe and Mal, obviously, uh, first being introduced to the Serenity. Or Mal just bought the Serenity. Um, and, yeah, and I enjoyed the lighting there in terms of, like, that golden, brown, yellow uh, haze or hue around them. Um, obviously, signifying that's a flashback scene. But I sort of got the indication as well that it's, like, another worldly planet. That it's a different planet that gives off different light. I don't know. I just thought it was like that. And then a neat transition there as Zoe and Mal go to explore um, the rest of the ship in the corridor. And their audio sort of fades out. And then it pans back down to Mal obviously seemingly dying or out of breath. So, yeah, interesting to see what happens. Take my love, take my land, take me where I cannot stand. <laughs> Now being shot. No. My turn. Well, Shepard told us a funny story about being a preacher. Funny story about being a doctor. Uh, I stuffed story. up the surgery once. Yeah, the sick people are hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, they, really? They can be. Uh, back there, I remember this time uh, I was working the ER and uh, this, uh, this um, fellow, this uh, you know, upright sort of citizen, he comes in and he's you know, complaining. Of, you know, uh, and Nara, she's got to have some funny horn stories, I'd wager. <laughs> oh, do I ever. 
you have no idea. <laughs> and you never will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't discuss my clients. No. You? Your companion doesn't kiss and tell. So there is kissing. <laughs> hey, Doc. I think Kaylee may need your help after all. They use a vestigial mode of time measurement based on solar cycles. It's not applicable. <laughs> Seems a fresh warrant for your arrest came up over the cortex. That's right, to us. Like it. Couldn't get a hold of no flowers, so it's mostly protein. You mean what we just had for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> but I tried to get the frosting as chocolatey tasting as possible. So I'm really I'm I'm very very deeply moved. <laughs> well, move yourself a lot of cans so we can try a slice. <laughs> Come on, Doc, you blow. <laughs> I'll go check it out. See, I want Take to commentate on something quickly right there. Um, and last episode, I said it was a really, really well blended episode of tone in terms of like, it was so comedic at the beginning. And then at the end, it really, really, you know, put into ghee and got really serious. And this episode begun with obviously Mal on the floor bleeding out, really struggling. So that's still in my mind while this is happening. And it was a fantastic transition as the camera panned up into sort of black. And then them sort of having like a dinner table meal where they were drinking, having fun, sort of like their last supper sort of vibes. Because you're still wondering at the beginning, what the heck just happened? No crew members to be seen. It's just Mal completely struggling like he's the last man standing. Lone survivor, Mark Wahlberg style. Um, but yeah... While this conversation is happening um, and the camaraderie between the crew is actually fantastic, it always has been in this show, um, in the back of my mind, I'm still thinking about what the heck is going on with Mal because clearly this is obviously before and this is going to be probably one of the most amazing or one of the better ca character-centric episodes for this season um, because it's got me wondering what the heck is going on in the background despite you know trying to pay attention to the dialogue having fun with the crew but at the same time i know all is not well because of how we begun the episode and yeah like i said again fantastic transition again um to make it look like it was done in one cut as you you know transition pan the camera up to sort of like one of the black i guess um sort of segments of the ship or like one of the other levels and then yeah transition to like the sort of uh, meal they're having over dinner but yeah it's got me thinking maybe um as wash was saying it's a week's journey to where they're going i mean it was meant to be an 18 hour route but because to avoid alliance stuff it's a week um and it's gonna be thinking something's happened over that week and this is week prior and then i guess we're gonna progress to what's eventually happening with mal at the beginning what the hell copyright oh You lock everything that leaves below deck. Leave what you want. Zoe's been badly hurt. I need my medical supplies. Sorry, Doc. Nobody leaves. Everything's sealed up tight. If you let me through, she could die. I let you through. We all die. All right, this is gonna be a banger. This is gonna be a banger. <laughs> Damn, Mal just did the Voldemort twirl with that freaking fire. You know how Voldemort with the wand in Order of the Phoenix went full on with the snake. Oh, Knowing that I have seen so no one. Okay, you're just going to be shot. GCS is flying your three finals back. How bad is it, Shane? You alright? Look at me, sweet Kaylee. Kaylee, look at me. Why are you the other injury thinking I'm gonna cause this? She ain't moving. Sorry, she's not moving. 
I know it. Because you want to leave the flesh out, but it was happening so you can get her going again, right? Think you can do that? Yes, Captain. That's a good girl. I love how Mal, like you guys said in the comments, I'm sorry to keep pausing, but I want to comment on stuff because there's so much to comment on. Love how Mal treats, you know, Kaylee like a little sister, as you guys were saying in the comment section last video. But I noticed as well, the lighting changes between what's happening in the present with Mal and obviously the flashback sequence or the events leading up to the explosion. Um, the lighting is much different, whereas in the Mal sequences, uh, it's sort of like a lot of light, um, sort of um, darkish blue colors, um, luminescent blue colors um and light blue colors and this one obviously it feels like a lot of natural colors obviously more like um like i said natural colors um and then with the mao sequence as well because it's solely focused on mao it's got me worried now for all our characters like have any of them actually died like what the heck is happening because it's only on the serenity ship it seems like this issue it doesn't seem like there's any external um sort of pirate gang or anomaly causing this so it's going to be interesting to see what's happened to the rest of our characters because at the moment we're solely focused on mao and no one else is to be seen in terms of like the uh, the present time sequences you're strong strongest person i ever met you could do this like it means i need to work wash and the doctor is going to do everything he can need to know how bad it is how bad? It's bad, okay, sir. My wife may be dying here, so my feelings is pretty damn bad. I'm not leaving her side, Mal. Don't ask me again. I wasn't asking. I was telling. Chanita. Damn. You're gonna get to that bridge. And you're gonna get us back on our feet. Yeah, yeah, shit just got real. Hey, you gotta think about the survival of the crew as well. <laughs> Real maneuverability out of this boat. Did it take a job? I do my job. I think I'm starting to get a feel here. Good. Just uh, feel around with the dials there. We'll be nearby. What? <laughs> something about him bothers me. What? What about him bothers you? I'm not sure. It's something. Well, I have to listen to recommendations as long as my leg. Tanaka raves about this guy. Renshaw's been trying to get him on a scoop for a month. I understand, sir. It bothers me. Look, we finally got ourselves a genius mechanic. It's about time we hired someone to fly this damn thing. Genius. Show me. Her heart stopped. What do you need, Doc? Right there. That's the one. What is it? Oh, the editing in this episode so far is mental. Because we're transitioning between sort of three different time periods. The present, obviously the past and the events leading up to the explosion, and then the past past with sort of like the introduction of the Serenity crew. That's when you know it's bad, when you can't provide, like, any outright assurances. Catalyzer on the port compression coil blew. Yeah, you're dead and Captain Dunn will talk to you. We're dead in the water. Can you fix it? Yeah, it's the only thing. It's all I need. No, you don't. You ain't even on. The explosion must have knocked it out. So what are we breathing? Whatever got pumped into the Atmo before the explosion shut it all down. How long? A couple of hours, maybe. We'll start to feel it, and then we won't feel nothing at all. Woo! Out of gas, out of oxygen, 
out of everything, out of ideas. I love how there's no like external threat this episode in terms of like another crime gang or another affiliation, someone else on another planet or anything like that. It's not an issue they're solving on the ground. It's an issue they have to deal with in space. It's just the crew themselves. It's going to be another exploration of the crew, um, the lengths they go to, uh, the challenges they face now, eventually, and the tension that's going to be created between them. Because obviously, we've already seen with Mal and Wash, um, Wash wanted to stay with his wife, and notably so. But at the same time, Mal wants to get the ship back on track, and that's really important, and Wash is the best man for that. And I'm really getting um, some alien vibes here at the beginning of the episode. Obviously, there's not a xenomorph on board. Um, but then again, it's like the exploration of the characters and an issue dealing on the ship just itself in one confined location. And I love that. It just goes to show you, you don't need an expansive freaking um, world uh, to create some tension, to create some action, to create some great drama. Look at this. It's just confined to one location in the Serenity. And I already can tell. I'm not even a quarter of the way through, almost halfway through. Um, yeah, it's a really great episode. Serenity had a vaguely funereal sound to it. <laughs> I love this ship. I had it in the first moment I saw it. I just don't want to die on it. Suffocation is not exactly the most dignified way to go. Mm -hmm. the body will Please, I don't think really require a clinical description right now. That would die gasping. It's not going to happen. <laughs> hey, Shepard, this is where the faith has got to come in, boy. Yeah, it's uh, pointless. Completely planned. So we'll all be safe. I'm a little weary of this attitude, Wash. Are you? I'm so very sorry, sir. Is that tension I, I guess the news about? that we're all going to be purple and bloated and fetal in a few hours has made me a little snippy. No, now. It's not possible. You wanted us flying under the radar, remember? Well, that's where we are. Out of range of anyone or anything. Then make it go further. I... What? can't make it go further. Not if all you're gonna do is sit around here and whinge about it. No. What do you expect me to do, Mal? Whatever you have to. And get a suit on and go outside on the side and of the boat. And what? Wave my arms around? Wave your arms around. Jump up and down. Divert the nav sass to the transmitter. Whatever. Divert the... Fun when you're about to die. The beacon of boost wouldn't. Yes. Now, it would boost the signal. All it would do is muck up their navigation. Could be that's true. Damn right, it's true. They'd be forced to stop and dig out our signal before they could even go anyplace. Maybe you should. Okay, good. Fine! Hey. What do you think you're doing? Fighting in a time like this. <laughs> Love how James the one to tell him to stop fighting. There's the challenges I was talking about with the crew. When a moment of crisis, that's when, you know, your relationships are tested. When you think of serenity as well, you think peace, calm, things like that. And this episode is a straight antithesis. That. What's this I hear about Polar opposite another delay? Of calm and peace. Absolute and chaos. <laughs> on this rock a week longer than we planned yeah stuff to do as for example that job we got waiting for us on packwood when we landed you said you needed a few days to get a space worthy again and is there something wrong with your bunk she likes engines Secondary grab boot shot. No, it ain't. Ain't nothing wrong with your grab boot. <laughs> grab boot's just fine. Little innocent Kaylee, eh? <laughs> and that's not what it is. No, it ain't. Kaylee, stop being in trouble. You're not in trouble too, okay? 
when I was down with my dad before? The red, what? The red couple. It gets packed, so I figure why even have one? Plug it straight into the port pin lock. What'd you do? She fixed it. Where'd you learn how to do that, Miss? I'll see you do it with that. Work for your daddy, Green? Not when he got work. You got much experience with a vessel like this? I never even been up in one before. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> as you like. As long as you can keep her in the sky. Yeah, you need a job? Well, what? I believe I just did. Don't have any folks. <laughs> Don't leave without me. <laughs> Little innocent Kaylee, go ahead, tied ah. up still like that. What do you need <laughs> two mechanics for? Oh, we don't. Go fire, Vesta. <laughs> Kaylee? Sorry, Captain. Just gotta stay like that. Usually she lets me know when something's wrong. Maybe if she did, I'd be still be paying attention. Right now, we all work to do, don't we? Cadillac's just broke. Gonna need a new one. What do I do with God? The part I don't hardly seem like nothing. Is that? Oh no, I thought that was the thing Mal was carrying at the beginning, like around the ship in the present time. You gotta figure a way to make it fit. Well, it can't be fixed without this engine, don't turn. We don't breathe. Maybe it is the thing Mal's carrying and trying to fix. Life support failure. Oh, it is, it is, it is, yeah, yeah. Right. We're focusing on what we don't got. Time to talk about what it is we do. What we got. Short range, won't go far, but each got heat and they each got air. That's longer than what's left on Serenity. No. So, as far as you can get, not in opposite directions. Better as a chance of someone getting seen, maybe picked up. Shepard Book, Kaylee, Jane. Doc, you and your sis arrived with Wash and Zoe, see that's how Zoe still needs some doctrine. Captain stays behind the ship. Shuttle. That's the arrangement. Evens the odds. I'm staying with Serenity. Mm -hmm. Managed to boost it a little. Got a chance. Got a response. Someone's gonna have to be here to answer. I always can believe thinking about the fate of the crew. Let's get the shuttles back. And I completely forgot about the two shuttles they could use. Wash. I know. Like you said, someone might answer the beacon. Call everyone back. Won't take but a minute. Now, drive smart. Don't push too hard. Shuttle life support should last you a good long while. See, you don't have to go down with your ship. She ain't going down. She ain't going anywhere. What I trouble, but don't trust him, and don't let him take over. Steal your ship. No. Well, as far as your security deposit goes, that I might have to owe you. Oh, here she is. Nice entry. The transitions are Unless. also set. Not overly. The transitions this episode as well are very character centric in terms of like when we're seeing our characters interact sort of in the past, um, involving the situation of you know what going off and the explosion. Not the present in terms of where Mao is struggling as a lone captain on this ship. Um, so when you have like sort of Mao and Inara interacting, and then bang, it transition to obvious um, uh, a 
Nara and Mal past past past. <laughs> you know, when they're first introducing her to the Serenity. Oh, when he's first introducing her to the Serenity. And it's sort of like the transitions are based off like what the characters are doing during the time of the explosion as well. Like I remember when Mal um, found the adrenaline thing as well, it transitioned back to the present when he was getting the adrenaline given to himself um, as he was trying to survive. Standard short, Super Gatmo from a wide orbit. Before we can begin the safe arrangement, Captain Reynolds, there are a few things I would require from you. Upon landing, I complete the autonomy. This shuttle would be my home. No crew member, including yourself, would be allowed entrance without my express invitation. <laughs> Get your privacy. <laughs> and just so we're clear, under no circumstances will I be servicing you or anyone who is under your employ. My guy invited himself the numerous other thing times. I would insist upon <laughs> is some measure of assurance that when I make an appointment with a client, I'm in a position to keep that appointment. That's why I don't assume it's even possible that reversal exists tonight. That's an awful lot of caveats and addendums there, miss. As I stated, I just want to be clear. Right. All that consideration while I review the application. Don't be ridiculous. You're going to rent this shuttle for me. Right. And for one quarter less than your asking price. And you figure you'll be getting this discount. Why exactly? <laughs> you have enough on your ship. Do I? Yes. I think that both my crew server or any of the other fish you might have online can't. Respect him. Based on what little I've seen of your operation, <laughs> I suspect that's something you could use. Well, let me ask you this. Respectable. Why are you even here? I know you wouldn't pay a fancy lady such as yourself, shipping out with big luxury liners in the flag, but you want to take advantage of on a boat like this? What do you want to know? I'm not willing to pay anything. If it's a alliance trouble you got, you might want to consider another ship. Why are you here today? The alliance has no quarrel with me. I was sent to bring you here. Did you? Well, I don't suppose you're the only one with this. Here we go. That's where the... Oh. One further addendum. <laughs> That's the last time you get to call me whore. About that. <laughs> Ever again. Uh, uh, sure. Being set. You sound like a talk. Talking loses up there, ain't no need for it. Mal. Can't. Four. One more. You know we can't make a difference. Not now. I'm not leaving Serenity. I don't think you're going alone. Everybody dies alone. This is Mal's Jack Sparrow moment. Going down with the Black Pearl. Let's go. Everything set and ready. I need the analysis of the boat shuttles. I need to the helm here. How much but once you call that boat shuttles? I noticed as well during like the flashback sequences, the color grading has changed or the lighting has changed. Sorry. Um, where I, first I was talking about with the Zoe Mao situation, it was really like a golden yellowish um, hue around them. And then in the conversation with the Mao and the Nara, it was sort of like a greenish color. Um, and then obviously when we transition to these scenes in terms of like what's happening during um, them, obviously aborting, Serenity, it's got the the blue the bluish lighting again, and then um, the present as well with Mao. It's again blue. Well, I guess the boat's not all blown deck. That's rid of what's left of the bridge. You're right. My advice is seal up everything tight behind you on your way back up. My advice in time. I'm set to see from there. Plane on the foredeck. When the time comes, I won't be needing it. But thanks. <laughs> Bloody Jane. One thing about this episode as well, the pacing. Spot on. For a 45 minute episode, the amount they've got in feels like a movie length. Just the right 
just the right amount of time spent on the flashbacks, just the right amount of time spent on the situation leading up to Mao's current state. Again, a lot of wide shots of the Serenity in its current state. Like you as the audience are living it for the last time. Like this is the Serenity's goodbye. Take one last look. That's what basically the show is saying to you. Damn, he woke up just at the wrong time. Probably thought he was dreaming. Let's go! Wait. You understand that I can't advise you what my best move is. I ain't asking for a ride, Captain. Just go flush his home. Right, your mechanical trouble with your compression coil, you say? It was a catalyzer. If you have until you don't got one, it appears to be everything. Possibly you might have something to do you which just come from a big salvage mission off by the moon. Ambush could be waiting for me and my people on the other side. You can turn this to a shelf of the rocks, just like I said. But now you scan me. One captain note. Oh. One captain to another. Help a brother out. <laughs> Fresh air. <laughs> I noticed at the beginning with Mal, those crates weren't there, so they might have been hustled. Just what you meant by ambush? Find anybody on board not supposed to be? You shoot him. Reason now. Yeah, that's a joke. Which one you pick the trackers? The ugly one, sir. <laughs> look reasonable to you. Not as deceiving as a low down, dirty deceiver. Wasn't that what I Had a kind of poetry to it, sir. Now, Marco. Wait till they tell us where to put the stuff. Found you. How much they pay me? <laughs> Let's say you did kill us. Or did. It could be torture. Whatever. But somehow, what would you cut them? 7% straight off the top. What? Hmm? Nothing. Is he loving you? Yes, sir. Hey, hello. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. Why? What is she doing? Knock it off. No, forget I said anything. I'm sure you treated very well. You get the perks, got your own room. You share a bunk. <laughs> hey, this ain't funny. You move on over to this side. I'm not even sure you went to stop sign. We'll see to it. You get your fair share. I know side seven. Hey, <laughs> go one of the kitchen. Whole shot. Shut up. Ship's clear, Captain. Yeah, we're right here in this cargo bay. So you take a look around, decide what you think is fair. Already distracted. I was about to say, is he gonna shoot him and leave him for dead? Fuck you, man. Honestly. Get this plugged in. 
screwing over here. Give me a hammer down. Pilot this, pilot goes sir, out of here. Jesse? Billy, leave the catalyzer. That's my captain. This is too far to I mean, they could just blow his ass out right now. It's like five on one. He would have done the same. Now get the hell off my ship. What a prick. Like, why? He just took amusement in shooting him and he's like, oh. now I had that last stand. He's done it! <laughs> I think he's done it. <laughs> he's done it! <laughs> I wonder how far the other shuttles have, like, gotten. I love those POV walking shots as Mal seemingly walking through the ship to get to the, um, the piloting room. Very, very good there. And the camera was very distorted and angled as if, you know, now was limping his way towards there. Because he's obviously shot and struggling. Come on, man. Click the red button. The red button. Well, never you. Oh, once. Everybody dies alone. Fucking hell. Very nearly. <laughs> oh, they're right here. Almost went to the special hell. <laughs> yeah, Mal, I'm fine. You got a thing, girl. Yeah. Try not to speak. Oh, blood transfusion. Heavily medicated, you lost a lot of blood. Oh. Is that a uh, machine? Is that your boy? No, no. I take full responsibility, Captain. Didn't take you long. Didn't again, sir. <laughs> Good. Oh, it's my pleasure, sir. I, I, well, hey, you know, there's something wrong with our shuttle. He's done something to it now. It smells funny. <laughs> I told you that's incense. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of comfort hey. at the end there. You fixed the ship. Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Just gonna need a few. I feel like I'm not gonna be here when I wake up. <laughs> I feel like just as the rest of the crew was struggling to breathe the entire episode, I was struggling That's to breathe good. with them. Now I can breathe. <laughs> Real beauty, ain't she? <laughs> yes, sir. Right, smart, purchase this vessel. You buy this ship, treat her proper, she'll be with you for the rest of your lives. <laughs> Han Solo found his Millennium Falcon. <laughs> and we end with the final shot of the Serenity right there. Hey, that was a fantastic episode of Firefly. Probably one of the best ones so far. Probably the best one so far. I'm not sure if it can get any better than that. I guess you guys know that. Um, we'll see. But um, yeah, really fantastic episode right there. And it was a great mixture of this sort of emergency situation. Our characters in peril. Our captain in peril. Mixed um, with obviously the flashbacks of the origins of the Serenity. And the flashbacks of how we got to Mao's current state at the beginning of the episode. Um, it was a real, real fantastic character-centric episode you saw the tension created in the moment of crisis now made obviously the big decision as the captain to go down with his ship per se and risk it all to save his crew as the two shuttles went um obviously with a bit of luck i don't know if you call it luck i guess it was a bit of luck um the other ship came um to provide mal with the catalyzer or the coil the specific engine part required that had blown out um 
and yeah you thought it was gonna be all right with him they were gonna take their baggage but no they shot Mao and even made it worse just to go to show there ain't many good people in this sort of universal world unlike our serenity crew it's amazing and yeah it was a great mixture of i don't know how to explain it it was it, it reminded me of alien from a filmmaking standpoint in terms of the establishing shots of the serenity and the ship and it goes to show how loved our crew is and how much we love the serenity as a ship and it was sort of like a final goodbye to the serenity even though it's only episode eight out of the 14 it felt like a final goodbye it felt like you had been on this long journey with them and it felt like that's it this is the end it felt like an ending episode it felt like a season finale if that means if that makes sense um in terms of the crew going their separate ways and the captain going down with his ship and there was no hope whatsoever because at the beginning of the episode you saw mal really badly hurt injured bleeding out no characters in sight and you're thinking to yourself what the heck has happened then you get the flashback sequences and you get the build up to how each of the members of the serenity you know became on board uh or became uh, a part of the crew and it was great it wasn't um they those scenes in terms of the flashbacks weren't extended they weren't dragged on too long because you know the characters and their motives from the seven episodes you've watched previously like i didn't need to see the whole entire jane sequence play out i knew how jane thinks i knew how jane operates i'm like yeah i know how this went down and it was the perfect um length for that scene and i really enjoyed those flashback sequences the pacing of the episode was really spot on and we could fill in the gaps of what happened because we know how our characters are and I really enjoyed the Inara Mao conversation with him calling her a whore and we know how that conversation um, or the, how that relationship's developed. He still continues to call her that, has slipped up a few times, has invited himself into her ship numerous times alone without her invitation or her permission. But yeah, fantastic um, episode right there. And yeah, you really thought, like I was really thinking the worst for our characters. I completely forgot about the two other shuttles. Um, and again, the lighting switch up as well between the flashbacks um certain conversations as well like it was really cleverly done um inara and mao had that sort of green warmish color in their conversation and i know green uh the color green has a certain meaning uh meaning to it and i will search that up after this episode it was very deliberate the lighting choices in terms of the sequences um and then obviously with the zoe mao being introduced to the serenity or buying the serenity you know golden um lighting right there very yellowish very halo like heavenly like color um even again with the situation with jane but in the nara one was completely different and we've always seen seen the introduction with um shepherd and simon and river um so yeah and oh the kaylee introduction as well um and we fill in the gaps ourselves there but yeah a really fantastic episode like i said again there wasn't an extent set uh, there wasn't an external like threat or anything there wasn't like um reavers or anything there wasn't the alliance it was just something that happened in the ship bad luck it is what it is the coil exploded uh, my camera just ran out of battery um and i was about to wrap it up anyway right there and yeah it was interesting to see how the crew dealt with it and at the end i felt like i can finally breathe everyone's safe but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed my reaction to episode 8 titled out of gas. That was absolutely fantastic. As always, it's been your boy, Moses. Take care. God bless and peace.